coffee here. Almost there. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Diego. I'm working for the search team. Uh, also, really uh, close to the Mojito guys, uh, which are there. Uh, so, this talk is about Node.js and cocktails um, and how we can scale Yahoo using those technologies. Uh, first of all, I'm from Spain. Yeah, our economy sucks, but we won the World Cup. Uh, so there's something at least we have. Um, so as I say, I work on search. Um, what we have to do in search, basically, I am on the platform team, and we have to provide the platform for other products at Yahoo uh, to be able to build on top of that. So to show you a really quick example, um, we have Yahoo News here. Uh, where you can see we have a lot of menus, a lot of search boxes, pictures, scroll views, a lot of stuff. Uh, if we go to Yahoo Sports, we can see that there's kind of similar things uh, that kind of are uh, in both, for example, the logo, the title, some menus here, some scroll views. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of things in common between verticals uh, that we have to maintain and keep. So what I wanted to do today in this talk is uh, show you how we're going to scale that. So we're scaling, we're going to talk about how we can really quick develop for all these uh, platforms, for all these, making sure that every team that want to create a vertical, everything that needs to create another property can do it really fast and can do it for all the devices around the market. It can do it in a way that is not painful. Um, so what we're going to scale exactly, uh, we're going to talk about performance uh, at the end of the day a bit, but what we're going to focus here is in the whole development process that we, we, we do since we start the application um, until we finish. And the, the, point, the key point here is that we as Yahoo, as a big company, we have to support a lot of uh, browsers, a lot of basically all of them, most likely, uh, a lot of languages, a lot of uh, um, dimensions, uh, a lot of third party providers. And that's basically a huge of dimension that we have to keep for our, our properties. And if we don't have a really good way to do it, that's going to be really painful. So we have to do all that, and every other company probably has to do that, but we have to do it fast. If not, we're going to get behind our competitors, right? So first of all, I would like to show you what's the platform like we have today um, and why it's not as good as we want it to be, right? So uh, that's an example that we ha have to happen on search that we have this old stack, which is reliable. You know, that you saw the picture of the ancient person there. Uh, it's kind of old, it's reliable, you know, it works for us, but uh, it has a lot of problems. So we don't have much unit test uh, because the way we used to develop uh, a couple of years ago and the way we should uh, evolve the code. Uh, we don't have, so, so for example, it's not straightforward to create a new entry point for a new device. You know, you have to just force the code or do some kind of trick to, you know, just completely rebuild the thing just for making maybe support iPhone or support uh, iPad, right? So what we want to do is basically avoid all these things that are wrong today and try to do it quickly and fast and, and reliably well. So we found that we could use a new powerful uh, tool and a new powerful environment on Node.js. And the reason we choose primary Node.js is the nature of Yahoo is we present a lot of content to the user. All our content is to read, right? So people is going to Yahoo to uh, read content. We just have to provide it. So we don't have a lot of writing, right? So uh, that's the main focus of uh, the key features, that all the properties they're going to talk about. Uh, so Node.js is not enough because as you, as you, um, even you use Express, Express is a really good framework, but there's a lot of things that still have to happen. Like for example, support device, language support, uh, all those things. So that's why we came up with Cocktails. Uh, and Cocktails is an umbrella of products that we, we have at Yahoo to be able to do all these things I mentioned you on the beginning. So basically everything is centered to and focused to Mojito, which is our app framework. Uh, which do the uh, web uh, app in itself. And we have a lot of other set of tools that uh, help us in the process of developing, right? So some of them are internal to Yahoo. Uh, we're not, either we have planned to open source it, we don't know yet. But what I'm going to show today is that everything that I'm going to show you, you can use it on your company or in your projects. So Mojito is totally open source. You can just uh, fork it, pull it, whatever you want to do with it, it's on GitHub. And all the other stuff uh, we're going to see you can also use some open source tool that uh, it can be. You can do the same work for you. Um, so let me start 
talking about mojito. How many of you know mojito? Okay, that's a fair amount. How many of you have been trying mojito for do some application? Uh, that's right. Uh, how many of you know or play with uh, Meteor or Derby? Impressive. So I did this conference uh, a while ago, and basically I found that it was the other way around. People like heard a lot about uh, Derby and Meteor, and they tried it out, but no one was heard about Mojito. So I was came with this Spaniard analogy where how many of you know this thing? No one. One? So this is Jamón Iberico, Jamón Serrano. It's a really amazing product uh, that we have in Spain. So the analogy here, this, because you and many people doesn't know mojito, many people doesn't know jamón, the analogy was like, just try it out. Try it out because it may turn out that it's really good. And I had uh, some jamón illegally imported from Spain, but uh, you have to thank Heredi. He ate it all yesterday. So uh, I don't have any to show you guys, but the, 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 the analogy was clear, so just, you, you, you should try it out. Um, so I'm going to talk about a little key points of Mojito. So the first one is that because we're using Node.js, we have one language to rule them all, right? And we as Yahoo as a company, a web company and a media company, most of our properties are web, which is then Node.js kind of a natural way to, uh, for developers to embrace, right? Because everything is JavaScript. Uh, and we don't have these switch environments anymore. And on top of that, uh, we're going to add that uh, we have two runtimes now. So because everything is on JavaScript, we can, we can possibly write the code which is going to work in both sizes. And we're going to see a demo about that. So how we can just write a controller, write a model, we just can simply de decide to deploy it to the client on the server. So we don't have to write these tedious Ajax, for example. You, you want to fetch some data, you have to write the logic on the server to fetch the data, and then you have to write the logic again on the client to make, to make sure that you display the data um, on the client side. right? So. Also, one of the key features of Mojito is really, really simple to write cross-device application. And we want to see an example as well. Like, uh, it's just dropping a file or dropping a couple of files in, in the right place or with the right name. And we're going to have to, we will cover every single device we want and every single other combination of dimension. We, we will talk about that later. Um, last but not least, localization internalization. So we do have to support a lot of languages. And also Mojito uh, provides a really simple way to leverage the YUI languages uh, what do I modules of Langs to do that? Um, so let me give you a little bit of a ground of Mojito. So Mojito and Mojits, uh, it, the work of a Mojit came for the mixture between a module, which is kind of a library they use on the server side, and a widget. And probably you are all familiar with the widget, right? So a Mojit is kind of a combination of both, because widget is something that normally you have on the client side, and a module is kind of a library they use on the server side. So because now the module can run in both places, and we will see that again in a minute, that's kind of a combination uh, of those things. To give you a quick example, that's the uh, new search uh, that we were working on with all these technologies. and so. The things that you see there uh, around it uh, in red, those are modules. So you can think of a module of an independent piece of uh, isolated and, 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 and sandboxed piece that have all self-contained. So it's a model view controller piece, right? And on top of that, we have some assets, uh, some YU modules and some other things that uh, make that part isolated. So we can just, let's say that we have a module on the top that we can build and package and then every other property on the company can use or any pro other property or project that any other friends is doing can reuse and, and, and utilize. So that's more or less the definition of a module. And I'm going to show you a real example uh, that actually you can uh, fetch from my GitHub account or you can just try it out uh, on, your, on your mobile or whatever device you want. Uh, so. I'm going to first of all explain to you really quick what this uh, app is about. So there's one simple module, which is the thing you're seeing on the screen. Uh, if we are lucky to have connection, let's see. All right, I have to start Mojito. So I'm going to start my Mojito server. It's really simple, Mojito start. And if we're lucky to have connection, hopefully we will. All right. So what the app is going to do is basically we're going to call the HTML5 geolocation. We're going to get the latitude and longitude. Uh, we're going to call YQL to get our, the weather for that location. And then we're going to have another model to just, based on that location, get some tweets. Really simple, right? So the workflow of this application, uh, the normal workflow is really simple, right? So we have our client. We fetch 
uh, do the weather get request to get HTML, right? And then we want to get the weather and we're going to get the tweet. So what we do is we have a call to our server and the server is going to do a call for a third party, in this case, OIQL or Twitter. We're going to get results back and we're going to get the client, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do that, but then we're going to do just a simple change in our code and we're going to be able to avoid the, the server anymore. So we're going to get the, the, the data from our server, the first get HTML, and from now on we can turn off our server and we can, everything is going to be through the client. And we're not going to modify any code at all. So let's see how we're going to do this. So I'm going to show you again how this thing works. Let's go to the network. All right. Let's don't worry about this, all this JavaScript right now. So when I click on get me the location, what's going to happen is Mojito is going to fetch some uh, data that he needs and he's doing a I just request, this time is a special Mojito I just request, which basically calls the server and say, you know, I need the data, go fetch it, uh, call your models and give me the back. Simple as that. The same with tweets, right? We're going to call our server and so forth and so on and so forth. That's good. So let's see the code really quick. Uh, as, I, as I told you, Mojito is an MVC framework. And here we have a controller. There's nothing really important on the code. I'm not going to deep into that. This is basically checking the parameters and all that. But look at the interesting part here. We have the two models, the YQL model, which is basically we're calling the YQL table, nothing really fancy here. And we have our Twitter model, which basically is just calling using JSONP uh, the Twitter API, right? So what we want to do now is say, you know what? For some reason, let's say I have my server saturated or you know, it's, it's the, the, the connection of this, this person is really, really high. So what I want to do is basically my, my service, I cannot, I cannot handle my connection. I'm going to ship everything to the client. Uh, and if you were in the Carity talk, you probably know more or less a bit how we're going to do. But this controller has an affinity, which in this case in server, which is say to Mojito, by the way, this piece of code is just meant to run on the server. But what I want to do here is just say, you know what, this piece of, uh, this piece of code is, it can run in both places, right? And I could, I could put client if I wanted to. So and changes the affinity to common. And basically, what's going to happen when I start my Mojito application uh, and I have to render that module, it's going to happen unless Mojito is going to know that that piece, it might be uh, interesting to, to deploy to the client and see what happens. So we see all this Mojito core. We're going to talk a little bit about that later. Let's see, the connection is a little bit tricky. So what's going to happen now is that I'm going to click here, and Mojito will know that, oh, by the way, we need, to, um, we need all the resources to fetch it to the client and call it from there. So what's going to happen is Mojito is fetching the dependencies that he needs. And as you can see here, now the YQL call is happening on the client. And if we remove that, if you check here, all the controller and all our, the needs that the controller has have been deployed to the client. And so now when we have the Twitter, when we call the Twitter, all of that are been there, is there already, right? Because we literally loaded uh, before. So the only thing we're going to do is just call directly the Twitter API. So as simple as that, we just move the components from the server to the client. And some people will say, like, Diego, that's, that's mm, all right, but you know, I'm not going to uh, kill someone for that functionality. So think about that. As simple as that, we can just deploy an offline application if we want. Or if we want to have, a, if, if we have a wrapper around, we just convert that to any other device if we want, without having to rewrite any single line of code, um, among other things that will be interesting as well. So going back to the presentation again, as I told you before, this is a really really simple way to do cross device application for Mojito, right? So again. Going back to the code, and I'm going to show you really quick how it looks in the simulator if it loads for me, which is not loading for some reason. Anyway, so I want to show you really quick. Uh, I have here the views. Oh, that might be. No, I think it's, I have everything in the same window. Uh, I can try to. Window? What happened with window? Is there? Bring all to front. Anywhere. This is this fancy uh, I'm working on. So what I want to show you, this doesn't really matter to see the iPhone. Uh, I have a, this is the view that my, my is being loaded on the desktop, the one you saw. Simple as creating a new file 
called index.iPhone, Mojito will analyze the user agent and it's going to know that, oh, by the way, I have, oh, I know I have a view specifically for that device. And it's going to load that instead of the other one. Uh, and basically, iPhone is one that we support by default, but you can create your own things. Let's say I want to share different assets when my user is in iPhone 4, or going to share different JavaScript um, when my user is in Corp, or is in test, or I'm in development. So we can do as, uh, as many combinations as we want, and Mojito will know exactly, depending on the context, which ones to load. Um, and also, the good thing is that because we're using Android Hook YUI in the loader, we always can be sure they're going to serve exactly the, the, the assets we need. So we're going to combo load and fetch only exactly the files that for every particular context we need. So we don't, we don't need it. So the comboing that we talked in the stock before, that's going to be for, and done for us automatically. So that's another really cool thing uh, that Mojito provides us. So I'm not going to talk about the languages because that's basically including the language file as a normal YUI module, and Mojito will pick it up for you. So now we have our build, uh, our app built. So now what's next? The next is how we, all right, we have our app which works in all the devices and all the languages, but we need to iterate, uh, iterate over there, uh, over the app, and we have to make sure that we have all this life cycle uh, going on. So. We, Mojito, provide us a really nice way to do continuous integration. So all the talks you saw these days were about you know, testing and documentation and all that. Uh, so Mojito, out of the box, provide this set of tools. You won't have to install anything else to do all this testing using, uh, for example, Travis. So just type in little commands, like I'm going to show you a little demo. Like, so we don't have to change, we don't have to install anything else. We just have to run these commands either on our box or on our CI, and everything will be uh, nice. So let me really quick go and show you how this works. Uh, if we do mojito docs, and then, for example, weather, what's going to happen is that, actually, mojito docs up, weather. And basically, under the hood, it's going to run select, and basically, it's going to analyze our application, which, of course, is going to be well documented, right? Uh, as you saw, these talks here. Let me see if I can copy really quick the URL to show you how the documentation looks like. Up. And as simple as that, we have our documentation ready. And we can probably integrate that with uh, the DAP class jog uh, if we want to make sure that we, we can do more things than that. But simple as that. Uh, another key feature is that Mojito provides uh, JSLint out of the box. And we can just check. So before I commit to the GIP or the SBN, I would like to you know, have a standard, a quality code uh, that everyone will, will understand. So Mojito also provides the JSLint out of the box. So you can see uh, I put uh, uh, on purpose some, some little errors there where like, there's a missing space and all that. So the good thing is that simple as running a command, we can make sure that our code has a quality standard before we commit it to uh, our repository. Uh, another really cool thing is that you saw um, Reed and some people that before talking about uh, Istanbul and uh, how to test. So Mojito also has uh, YUI test and Istanbul integrated. Um, so what we're going to do is basically pass all the tests of our app to make sure that we didn't break anything before we commit. And basically we have a test to just convert uh, temperature between uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit. And on purpose, I just modified something so the, the, the calculation is not correct. So as you can see, that we have some failures. Uh, so we should fix that before we commit any code. Uh, and the good thing is that all this is built on top of Mojito. So we don't have to install any, anything. Uh, the last but not least, um, as you see here, there's a lot of resources being fetched when I first load the page, right? Well, now I have the server stopped. But we can run it really quick again. OK? And you can see that. You will say, oh, man, but there's a lot of JavaScript going on there. Like, there's no combo loading happening. That's because we are in developer mode. Uh, we have some tools to automate that process. So uh, on this CI, we can just basically, when all the test passes, we can just push to production. So there's a tool that uh, we brought, uh, we, we built. Uh, it's called Mojito Shake. And what I basically do is productionize my app. Basically, minify, concatenate, and put all the rollups specific for every context. So I'm going to serve only the things I need. So I'm going to say here, environment. Uh, stage, for example, and actually I'm going to do run. So what I'm doing here is just uh, Shaker is going to analyze my application. This, this third-party tool is going to analyze my application, and basically it's going to 
pro produce uh, the assets exactly I need. So now, if I load my application, you see that now we just have four uh, JavaScript files. And it's four because, uh, <laughs> no, it's four, it's four. I understand there's not, there's not a big deal. It has to be one, right? And just a, a little example uh, to show you that we have that automated and everything is cool. That's the demo I did already. So now we have the continuous integration done. And what we want to do next is, all right, I build these modules, which are kind of independent pieces. For example, we saw in the weather. Or in the case of search, we have this search box or these little parts of the page. Why we cannot just take these little packages and ship it independently so maybe tomorrow another team of my, of my, of my company can use, right? So what we did is basically, on top of NPM, we just create our own NPM registry where we can pull our little modules to this central repository and then any other people can use it. As simple as just provide uh, a standardized uh, folder structure that NPM can understand and a package.json which can have dependencies, we package all that. We package modules or several modules, we can package whatever we want, then we just send it to the uh, NPM registry which is basically our, our own, as a normal regular NPM but just our own, you can just have your own as well in your company. And then any other person on the, on the, on the company, you can see that there's a, like a search box or another plugin or another module that can be shareable and you can use, right? So the problem with that is the, uh, this is an example really quick how, for example, the news app is done. A Mojito app is built on top of whatever dependency we want. So in this case, we have Mojito and Shaker, which is the tool I showed you before. And you know, we have some other package that another team on the company did, for example, the search box, uh, something for the images, and some data provider for some videos, for example. And basically just doing that, Mojito will pull, that, pull, those, pull those packages for me, uh, put it in a folder structure that you need it, and we don't have to do anything else. We just have to modify maybe some configuration in our, co in our application, and that's it. And that's what we're doing today in, in, in real life. So I'm not, I'm not telling you nothing that we cannot do today. Uh, so we have now this concept of modules being shared and packages together. There's also a concern where, you know, I don't want to use a code that I don't wrote it because you are not a good coder and I don't, just don't want to use your code, right? So why we don't use the same paradigm we use for our application where we have the CI, but instead of doing for the whole app, why we don't do the same thing for our, our modules, right? And the reason for that is we all know that Node.js and JavaScript has the little, I don't want to say problem, but hazard of dealing with anonymous function. And when you're trying to debug another people's code, it's really complicated because of this callback endless and if you ever have to debug Node.js, and you know what I'm talking about, and we know that debugging anonymous function is hard for the health. Uh, so what we did basically is enforce the same constraint for our application before committing, uh, we enforce the same constraint for our modules as it was our app. So before we can commit something to our this global company-wise uh, uh, registry, we do it, you pass it through the, our CI, and we make sure that we pass this all the tests. We make sure that there's no CSS lint errors and there's no JS lint error. So if all that is accomplished, what we're going to have is that we're going to have a really reliable uh, package on our central repository that is likely, it's unlikely to happen that there's something broke there. And hopefully, right? So embracing that, we, we can make sure that we have a central place where uh, we can get with a certain level of confidence, reliable module that we can reuse, right? So basically what we did here is just pushing together the continuous integration plus the shared components and packages, and that's it. So last but not least, uh, we have to deploy the application, right? So we have uh, internally a, a cloud that we use for just, as a part of DCI, uh, push it to, the, to, the, to our production servers, but uh, Mojito is a normal Node.js um, application built on top of Express, so we can use Heroku or uh, Node.jitsu to just uh, work with that. So basically, the problem is that it's not out of the box, so if there's no command that you do Mojito deploy and we pass on configuration and we deploy to Heroku or Node.jitsu, that's not done yet. Uh, we're working on it, but we can just, basically you have to do it, do it manually. You just push the content of your app in either Heroku or uh, Node.jitsu and you will have your application up and running, no, no big deal. So the last thing I would like to talk about is that now you can see they have all, the, all this process uh, done. And 
what we achieved with that is, and, and we're, we're seeing that today, that we have several verticals now. We just finished news. We're working with news search. So what we provide is the structure uh, and just having Mojito under the hood to do all these things, we can just tomorrow ship that application to another team. And they're going to be able to ramp up really quick and basically build a new application for all these devices really, really, really quick. Because most of the components, they already have it. And the ones they have to build, either they can use utilities that already exist on the registry, uh, or if they have to build them, this, this, they can just also build them and share it with other people. right? So the last thing I would like to talk about is about performance. Because actually, uh, many people was uh, staying in blocks, you know, like Node.js is the ultimate performance server side. So we have had some problems with performance, uh, and now we're good. But what I want to focus here, we have, I have uh, this nice graph which show like how many QPS we can have and how, how good Node.js is. But what I, what, I, what I found is that sometimes when I go to conference and people are starting to say like, oh, with Node.js I, I can reach 700 QPS per second, uh, that's, that's kind of lying to people, right? Because actually, depending on your application, that's how your performance is going to be, right? So for example, for us, Node.js was a really, really good option because I was explaining you before, we, as, a, as, as, as a, the product at Yahoo, we just need to send content and flash content as soon as we get it. So we don't have to have anything that has to write back and forth with the user. So what we're going to do is just display content. We just have 200 requests as soon as we can, and for that, the, the paradigm of Node with I.O. Uh, throughput, where there's no blocking, is really good for us, right? But I want to try to say here is that we have to be pragmatic. And I think we saw all these two days uh, uh, being pragmatic is the way to go, right? Because if someone tells you that Node.js is the best platform for performance, if you're competing people notch in the server, maybe Node is not the best solution for you. So uh, I didn't put any graphic because, I, as I say, I don't find it any useful. And I think you as a developer should uh, Evaluate your tools, evaluate the frameworks out there, and make sure that you, try, you pick the right one. So if you're looking for some framework that basically has the needs that, that we have, or have the, uh, the, the, the need to, for re reading really quick, or, or just sending a, little, really a huge number of requests and have a life cycle of the application uh, being as good as, as, as I showed you before, uh, maybe that's a good choice for you as well. So. Um, Again, be pragmatic. Uh, if you think Mojito and YUI is suitable for you, for your company or for your project, it's, I think it's a good tool for use. And I think that's all for me today. That's a little bit of uh, uh, information there. We have a training on Mojito in my GitHub account. There's a video also explaining more. If you go into the Curtis talk, you probably understand a bit more about Mojito. And the slides also are available on my, on my personal web page. And remember to try before you leave. Sorry, I don't have some jamón. Blame this guy there. Uh, but next time, I promise I will bring some illegal jamón from Spain. Thank you. All right, we have time for questions. Do we have uh, some questions for Diego about Node.js and cocktails? Hi. Um, once you've got your Mojits and pulled them from your kind of NPM thing to put your app together, can you then shake it again to combo Everything that's on that. Yeah, so, so uh, we're, we're, this, we're still working on Shaker, but it depends on the Mojito version you're using. But what we want to do is make sure that you have the best performance uh, that we can get. So the way it works is that you have your modules. And by default, what you can do is say, you know, I have these modules that I know that 90% percent So for example, let me, let me show you what we do in search. We have 50 modules, right? And 40 of them, we know that we're going to serve for sure because there are results, there's the search box. So what we can do with Shaker, like, uh, I know that there's 40 modules I have to serve in 99% of the page. So we're going to bundle together, and that's going to be your initial rollup for JavaScript from CSS. And then whatever is fetched later, um, you can just, Mojito has the way, Shaker also allows you to do combo load from CDN uh, on, on runtime. So the idea is that you can do whatever you want. If you want all, all, all the, for example, let's say that we have iPhone and iPad, right? So Shaker for you is going to analyze your application and analyze that you have these views, you have these dependencies for iPhone, which are different for iPad. And regarding the content on runtime, it's going to pick exactly the rollup you need. So you're not going to get only the CSS for that particular request. If you are in US, you're not going to serve uh, any asset for, for China. Or if you are in, so the idea behind Shaker and behind Mojito is that you all, out of the box, you don't have to do anything. Your app, you run Shaker, and whatever your content you define, you're going to get uh, 
exactly the, the request you need. So you can decide also, I want to lazy load that, or I don't want to lazy load that. But whatever you do, for example, right now we're working on getting every single thing from CDN and combo loaded. So you're not going to get a single asset. Uh, so if we can do two requests, we're not going to do three. And basically, we're going to try to reduce even the putting all the YUI uh, combo loading within the proper uh, files of the app. So we serve everything from the same file. So we're just going to get one JavaScript uh, for your own app. And, and it doesn't matter which are your contents, because Shaker is going to make sure that you're going to serve the right one. So from a developer point of view, you don't have to do anything at all. You just have to set. And in developer work, you just set the configuration of Shaker for working on production or in whatever environment you want. And for example, we have a CI to basically, all right, when the, all the test passes, push to production. You run Shaker before you push to production. You generate all these files, push it to CDN. And basically, when you run, everything is there. So, and we handle also the inconsistencies for if I commit and then I have a new build. All of that, all of that is, is, is happening for you automatically. So we don't have to worry. Or, or the, the point is, we don't have to, you don't have to worry about that. And as I, I, as I mentioned before, uh, all the CDN we do, um, we have our own CDN. But if you don't have a, a CDN, you can just, for example, I, I'm working on, on making sure that, for example, in Amazon work, you just have to have an, a W3C account. I don't know, W3C, how is the, uh, in the Amazon cloud system. So I think that, uh, we're working on uh, getting the combo load on Amazon so you can have uh, an Amazon CDN that can work for you if you are not, uh, you don't have one. Or for example, the guy from Wells Fargo said that they have their own. It will perfectly, uh, just some configuration, it will work as well. Uh, but some of those stuff is coming. Uh, it's not done yet. Right now, the combo loading is, is uh, uh, using the YUI, but not, it, we don't support yet uh, Amazon, for example, or any of the combo load, but uh, we are, we're working on that. Next question. Um, can we nest mojits, or is there a performance impact in nesting mojits? Like, for instance, uh, if the, if I have a dashboard, yeah, and I have multiple mojits on the dashboard. So, right. so let me let me go to this question. Let's see if I can access the uh, the page I'm working on. So, let's see if I can access. Yeah, I think I have access. So, everything you see here is mojito behind the scenes. So, for example, the results are mojits. Oh, this little box here is a module. This is a module. So, so we're like about 50, 50 modules, if I'm not mistaken. So those actually are nested modules. One, so there's a parent, and then we, we nest all the modules. So uh, Mojito is pretty good that we, we got it on a level that uh, we cache. If we, for example, we know that uh, we're going to invoke this 50 times, so we cache the, the module, so we don't have to execute and dispatch the same module again. So. We're using it in search, which and actually we need to have a really good performance. Uh, we're we're not in the point where we want to be, but we're pretty good to be on production uh, so far, and we, we, that's in production today. Um, and so to answer the question, the performance impact of executing a lot of modules is not is not really high, and we have, we have to execute more multiple modules multiple times. That's being cached by Mojito, so to avoid the overhead of have to uh, calculate like whatever dependencies that Mojito has to calculate. So. Um, How about lazily loading a mojito? So basically, that's kind of going to internals of Mojito. But the good thing about Mojito is you can decide on runtime whatever you want to do. So you can say, you know what, I'm going to just preload everything on the page because um, I just need it right away. For example, what we do here with the CSS and the JavaScript, all the, all the JavaScript we need on the CSS, we tell Shaker, Pull that really quick on the page. Uh, I can show you really quick maybe um, the CSS or the JavaScript. It's not where we're going to be, I should tell you. There's a little bit of issues, but uh, let's see if the connection. So for example, we just serve one CSS, which contains everything. All those other things are uh, other external components that are fetching and other things that we don't control. Uh, and in the, in the JavaScript is the same. And if we go to an iPhone version, you're going to see that there's also one, one JavaScript file combo loaded there. And the good thing is that we don't have to do anything to make that happen. So that, all of that is uh, done for us, either with Shaker or, or, or by Mojito. And also the good thing is that I, I, we, I, we decide that we need all these modules preloaded. But we can say, you know what, just when something, let's say that we're going to click here, I want to invoke a, a new module. And, and that time is when we're going to fetch the dependency for that module and the CSS for that module. 
only in that particular time. And, and also the context that we need. So if you want an iPhone, we're going to search the CSS for that module that you just load and the JavaScript that you just load. So that's a really one of the most amazing things of Mojito is that the, the, we're embracing why UI loader and why UI combo, not the way we, we, we do the module requirement. So we know ahead of time what we need and when we need it. And having that is as simple as, as just um, pushing the app and, and we work. So there's no crazy configuration happening. So, so yeah, to give you more details, uh, or at least some, some sort of uh, baseline, we are targeting one millisecond per module that you have in the page. If the module is just a simple execution, which means that if you have a page that has 40 modules, you will be spending around 40 milliseconds on the server side, which is the, the, the biggest challenge. Because the client side, we have the same challenge that you have in YUI. And we all know how to try to tackle that, right? But on the server side, things are a little bit different. And our baseline should be that one millisecond per module in the page. Obviously, you, your module will go and get data and do some heavy lifting. That's the overhead that your software is adding. Yeah. But the baseline should be one millisecond per yeah. module. And actually, that's really important because if we if we if we don't, if we are not performing the the response, the response, Node.js is going to perform really bad for us because if we are queuing uh, response and response, uh, Node.js basically is going to ramp up with memory, and in two hours it's going to be a crash because um, that's basically the paradigm, right? We need to be able to flash connection as soon as we can. So we need to be, Mojito has to need uh, as fast as possible to be able to handle as many connections as possible. So that's why, uh, can you say, one millisecond is a reasonable amount of time for computing a module. Uh, and, and of course, if you're not going to compete for one action in the server, <laughs> this is not the right thing to use, right? We are pretty We're good. Um, this might end up being a stupid question because it's off the top of my head a bit. Um, if you had, so say you had an app that had search results and the weather below it, and you're looking at it on a desktop, and you know, they're both there, and say you want them both there kind of straight away. If you had the same thing on a phone, where you, you know that your search results are going to fill the screen and the weather's going to be way off the bottom, and it's going to be a while before anyone sees it, could you do stuff where the weather module is served late and as a client side thing, say that the data request is happening from the client once the search results are all there and they're kind of busy looking at those. Yeah, so, so, so you can either, so even if you have the common affinity, you can on runtime decide if you want to load the results. So for example, what I showed you, like it's really nice to deploy things to the client, but not necessarily is the thing that you want to do. Maybe you want to do some credential authentication and for that you want to go to the server, right? And so the thing is that just with the affinity, you can decide. So if it's common, you can, as a user, just check in. Maybe you want to say, like, let me check the bandwidth. And regarding that, you can say, all right, I'm going to go to the server, or I'm going to deploy the things right now. And you can do that on runtime. You don't need to do that uh, through configuration. Like, either I put it client, or either I put the server. No, you can do whatever you want. Maybe it's a little bit more tricky of configuration, or maybe you have to write some logic for that. But um, you can do it. So that's, that's one of the uh, main points. Um, also, in uh in Mojito, we have the beginnings of uh, you know lazy loading a modget. Um, it's probably not as rich as it needs to be, but we've got to start on that. So actually, just 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 side note, our goal is to allow you to do that with two lines of code. One is that saying, I want to get this lazy load in this particular context, which in this case is a mobile, and the second one is to I'll add a line that will say, whenever you scroll, go and surface this thing. That's our goal. Uh, we are kind of far from it because we want to integrate more of the app framework, but still you can do it with the infrastructure that we have today. I want to show you really quick, now we have a little bit of time, how the Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can decide like on on like you can either decide uh, when you're in the client side when you lo load a new module, you can decide which part of the module you wanna fetch. Like say, I'm gonna fetch all the modules like controller models and everything depending on that, or is it gonna fetch the client side part and then when you have to go to the server, just you know uh, load, do that when you need it. So the good point is that at at, at any point you can decide uh, what you wanna what you wanna fetch and when. So I wanna just show you how how beautiful is the 
the new search on the iPhone if I allow to do that. Damn it. Paste. Thank you. All right. Don't look at the screen. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right. I cannot do this here. But uh, <laughs> just to give you a really quick, wow. our 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 master CSS designer uh, made the web so. Oh, well, let me let me remove this thing. Uh, so doesn't matter the size of the screen. Look at that. Ah, the production URL. All right. Let me see if I'm in the bucket. So as you can see, the, the everything is responsive. Uh, doesn't matter the size of the screen, uh, assuming that it's an iPhone. And we load different things for an iPhone. For example, uh, actually, let me change the your, the type here. Override shortcuts. Where is this thing? Yeah, user agent. Let's do iPhone five. No, I don't want any visualized metric, and then let's reload thing. So this thing is like uh, a little top to down. So there's a different logic ha happening regarding the device. Uh, so that's all the loading, depending on the contest, is done automatically for us. Of course, you have to design Thinker Mobile first, because we, if not, you don't have all this functionality. But at least you have the ability to create every specific asset for every particular context, and as simple as just dropping the file in the right place. Or dropping, oh, I need this little new feature for iPhone. I just drop a new controller.iphone.common, and it will work. Or I just need this little CSS. So you name the CSS, and Shaker will make that work for you. So um, it's open source ready to use. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? Is that server-side modules or common? So, so th those modules are. Can you repeat the question? So those. Yeah, the question is like if the modules we're using here are um, <coughs> server side. So basically, the logic, the controller is server side. So we don't have anything client here more than the logic you see. So we just deploy a tiny piece of the client, which is called binders. And if you look at the documentation, you're going to learn a little bit more about that. So all the so we we fetch our model, which are pretty fast. We get the data. We just compute all this in the controller uh, on the modules, and we just send it. We we do the nesting tree for getting all these modules executed and we send it to the client. And the only thing we deploy in the client is like the YGI modules and the YGI things that we need. But right now, let's say that we're going to invoke a new module. There's a new module when I go and search for, I don't know, cars that appears there. That I can be, you know, I can say load this module dynamically and fetch it to the client and load uh, the controller. Maybe I want to adapt for that to be on the client because it's fetching YQL. And that for that, I can do it on the client. So I can, I can just decide whatever I want to do. Any last questions? All right, thank you very much, Diego. Let's give a big hand for Diego. <laughs>